Claire Iris, firstly, this potential coalition, parties that don't appear to have too much in common. Can you tell us a bit more about it and can it really work? Uh, that's the question being asked in Israel today. There was a great deal of um, almost celebration last night when the announcement was made that this small right-wing party was going to be part of the Coalition for Change. But the Coalition for Change is not bedded down yet. And it has parties from the whole spectrum of Israeli politics, from um, an Arab party at one end, uh, left-wing parties, centrist parties, and now this right-wing party and another one who are defectors or refugees from Netanyahu's Likud um, coalition. So will it work is a very big question. At the moment, before Wednesday, Yair Lapid, the leader of the opposition, who's agreed to go second in a rotating premiership, if one is formed, he, has, he is trying to bed down... All the discussions at the moment are about ministerial posts, who has what, what kind of power each party will have in this unwieldy coalition. But there is a feeling for the first time that perhaps Israel is seeing the end of this phase of Benjamin Netanyahu's career after 12 years um, in this, this term, uh, more than 12 years, and um, his, he is now Israel's longest serving prime minister who really has stamped himself on this parliament and, and on this nation. And we've heard indeed some very strong reactions from Benjamin Netanyahu to this talk of this potential coalition. It sounds like this coalition, they need to, to present it by Wednesday evening, but they also after that need it validated with a vote of confidence. And that's something I believe Netanyahu will is trying to stop. That's right. Netanyahu is now in the phase. He gave a speech last night. Let me just start with that which was so furious, I don't think I've ever seen him so angry. And Israeli analysts were saying that this is how he was in the 1990s when he was leader of the opposition. Furious, venomous, this is a fraud, these are con men, uh, this coalition will never work, Israel's security will suffer, this is a dangerous left-wing coalition, and on and on. Um, so what he is now doing is not trying to set up his own government, but trying to foil this one, to torpedo the chances of this one. He has a week from Wednesday, so until Wednesday and a week from Wednesday to do it. And it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that he will and that shaky people in this coalition may not withstand the pressure and won't vote in the parliament for the new coalition government. So we see Netanyahu's strengths as a fighter and his fury uh, undimmed by all these years in office. Indeed, it sounds like we are as yet very far from the end of Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel. That could well be. You know, it's quite interesting how all the Israeli analysts, he is so powerful here and he has stamped himself, he has ruled with such an iron fist uh, and ruled through chaos as well. So there aren't people in key positions, so he is even more powerful that even Israeli analysts have been saying, you know, using that sporting analogy, it's not over till it's not over, it's not over till the fat lady sings. I don't think anyone will believe that Netanyahu is not in office uh, until he actually leaves. And all his negotiations, by the way, when he was going to be in a rotating prime ministership, had him staying in the prime minister's residence, just a sign of how much he wants to stay there. And I think it's very interesting that no analyst even, let alone other politicians, can imagine um, politics without Benjamin Netanyahu. What a difference a week may bring. Iris Mackler for now, thanks very much indeed.